Hi, welcome to the demonstration of the instrument grade millimeter wave transmitter signal chain. My name is Arkan Ajar and I will help with this demo today. Millimeter wave frequencies, which are from about 20 gigahertz to 110 gigahertz, are becoming increasingly popular because of the never-ending demand for higher bandwidths. Much larger bandwidths are available at millimeter wave frequencies. With the advances in semiconductor technologies, millimeter wave frequency devices are becoming increasingly more available. However, test and measurement instrumentation for millimeter wave devices can be very complex. Affordable instrumentation solutions are needed to address the test and measurement needs of millimeter wave equipment. We will use EVM as a performance metric in today's discussion. EVM is an RMS average of error vectors for each received symbol compared to their ideal location. Radio devices have a bathtub EVM curve as shown in this picture. This curve shows a usable dynamic range for the device with respect to the operating power. However, instrumentation solutions usually target an order of magnitude lower EVM than most of the standard limits. If we apply this limit to the same device, we see that the usable range for the device gets reduced. The question we will answer today is, how do I build millimeter wave test equipment that outperforms the standard by more than an order of magnitude on EVM? I would like to demonstrate a circuit that can be used as a reference to build millimeter wave signal chains using the latest surface mount components from analog devices. In most cases, through component selection and optimization, the EVM can be improved by a good margin. However, this may not be enough. By reconfiguring the system, we can trade off the noise performance for the linearity performance, shifting the curve to the right. We can also do the opposite, where we reconfigure the system for a better noise performance. This would shift the curve to the left. As a result of reconfiguration, we can create a new bathtub curve that is an order of magnitude better than the original design. In this setup, we are constructing a millimeter wave transmit chain using a high-speed digital-to-analog converter, a millimeter wave up converter, an ultra-low phase noise translation loop device, and an amplifier. We are using a complex IF topology in this demo. With the complex IF topology, the filtering can be simplified while achieving a good overall performance. We are creating the complex IF using the MXFE device. This device contains four DACs that are running at 12 giga sample per second each. The device can generate the complex IF waveforms directly using the built-in digital modulator. We feed these IF signals, which are 90 degree apart to the ADMV1013, which is an integrated millimeter wave up converter with a built-in frequency multiplier and tunable LO filters. We are using the ADF 4401A, which is a translation loop device to create this carrier signal for the up conversion operation. This device creates a carrier signal with a very clean spectral content and ultra low phase noise. The output of this millimeter wave modulator is connected to a millimeter wave frequency amplifier, HMC635. Finally, the output of the amplifier is connected to the vector signal analyzer. Here is the output spectrum of the transmit signal chain. As I mentioned earlier, we are using the complex IF topology to reduce the complexity of filtering. The desired signal is at the upper sideband. The carrier feed through and the image signal are also visible at the output. The carrier feed through may seem too high at first, but this was done intentionally to show the integrated LO nulling feature of the ADMV1013 device. As you can see, the carrier feed through can be reduced significantly by utilizing the LO nulling feature, which is integrated into the ADMV1013 device. The LO feed through cancellation and sideband reduction will help to simplify the filter 
that would be needed on the signal chain. In this simple setup, we achieved minus 35 dBc sideband reduction and minus 30 dBc carrier feed-through reduction without doing any additional calibration. These can be improved even more through calibration. Now, on to the EVM performance on the transmit chain. We are connecting the output of the transmit chain to a commercial vector signal analyzer. Once again, the test vector is 100 MHz wide, 5G new radio FR2 waveform with 256 quadrature amplitude modulation. The constellation diagram is shown here. You can see that the EVM is pretty good. Let's look at the EVM performance across frequency. You can see that the overall EVM performance is very good. Keep in mind that the standard EVM limit is around minus 30 dB. We are showing about 15 dB less EVM than the standard limit. Using ADF4401A, we achieve equal or better EVM performance compared to a commercial benchtop signal generator. Let's review the results of the EVM performance optimization we discussed earlier. Here, you can see the EVM response of the transmit chain versus the output power. Notice that we have several bathtop curves for each configuration of the system. At low power levels, the final amplifier in the signal chain is bypassed. This helps to favor the noise performance over the linearity performance. As the output power increases, we configure the device to favor linearity over the noise performance. The resulting EVM bathtop curve is much wider. This proves that system level EVM performance can be improved by reconfiguring systems. To close the discussion, I'd like to summarize the key takeaways. Millimeter wave frequencies are becoming attractive because of the demand for larger bandwidths. Instrumentation needed for millimeter wave devices has challenging performance requirements. ADI offers a wide range of devices to construct instrument-grade millimeter wave signal chains. For more information, visit us at analog.com instrumenting5g. Mm -hmm.